How the hell you doing, Brainiacs? Long Allen Ice-T here, ready to talk pro grips with you! First Brain Buster Radio of 2019. Lies! We did a pre-show, right, for Wrestle Kingdom. I think that was after the new year. Either way, this is the first regular Brain Buster Radio of 2019 because we're not only talking New Japan Pro Wrestling, but everything in the sport of pro wrestling we need to be talking about this week. we got a big-ass Raw coming up. We've got crazy spots happening on the indies, getting people talking to start the year off right. We've got a legend to pay tribute to. Today's episode will be fully dedicated to the one, the only, the greatest interviewer of all time, mean, by God, Gene Okerlund, who passed away this week. And uh, we'll remember Mean Gene throughout the show. It is going to be a bust-ass show, Brainiacs. I don't know where to start. Tweet it, read it, tout it, shout it. Be all about it at the Brain Busters on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Let us know each week what you think is causing all this. Because really, unless you speak up, it's a dictatorship and Triple J tells us what we're doing. Vin Man is here. It's a limited date for him. It's the beginning of the year. He's ready to start off 2019, right? We've got a man called Wired, the Sultan of Social Media. And we've got Dr. Calsonis on the Unos and Doses. But it's really him. It's the return of Moose the Mark. It's 2019, and Moose the Mark is starting the year off on the program, making a big return. It's the biggest news of the wrestling year so far for me. Moose the Mark, welcome back to Brain Buster Radio. Well, you know something, Long Island. I mean, one of the greatest hallmarks of this sport is the the big comeback, the big return. John Cena at the Royal Rumble, Stone Cold coming in to help Mick Foley win his first title. I mean, these are the moments that we cherish forever, and I'm hoping today with my return to Brain Buster Radio that I'm getting right up there with all those other ones. Vinman, it's the biggest week of returns in the history of our sport. The return of Brock Lesnar to Raw. The return of Braun Strowman to Raw. The return of John Cena to Raw. The return of Hulk Hogan to Raw. And the return of Moose the Mark on Brain Buster Radio. It, it is something to behold. I, I've been hyping up this Raw coming up on Monday all week. And we got Moose the Mark here to talk about it. Nothing is better than Brain Buster Radio in 2019, brother, let me tell you. Here we go. We're, we're starting the year off triple j what's causing all this in 2019 well guys it is rare that you hear me say i am 100 percent caught up uh, with almost any wrestling program but especially <laughs> but especially new japan pro wrestling and i am here to tell you uh, you know I, I i am in like flynn it, it i have made yes, it through yes, yes, the 13th yes, iteration of yes, wrestle kingdom i also made it through new year dash i'm yes, not sure if yes, uh, time is going to permit to allow us to discuss any of that. But Wrestle Kingdom 13, it happened. I know some of us were some of us were live, and apparently, uh, you know, some of us that were not live are evil. Uh, I, I'm not sure how much I buy into that or not. But Wrestle Kingdom, Long Island, you were up in the wee hours of the morning by candlelight watching this thing. Hell of a show from top to bottom. Did not seem like four hours to me. Oh, it, it was the fastest four hours of my life. Fastest five hours because I did watch the pre-show. Dr. Calsonis, he did not make it all the way through. He's actually still tired. Look at him over there. He's yawning. He's, he's got his mic off. He looks awful today. He he tried to make it through with me. He passed out at the Jay White match. So with that, Dr. Calsonis, you could fire it up for yourself because, like we said, if you don't watch live, that makes you evil. So, Dr. Calsonis, you are evil. Evil. And so is anyone else who didn't make it all the way through. I did, and it was the best Wrestle Kingdom of all time, bar none. It, it was top to bottom, nonstop, excellent pro wrestling, or puturesu, if you will. I mean, Moose the Mark, it was so good, you, sh- made, you showed up today. That's how I, I know should. it's the best ever. Yeah, and certain things just happen in this business, certain paradigm-shaking moments. And I think this 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 huge Wrestle Kingdom with every single belt on the line, changing hands, a new era for New Japan, and indeed all pro wrestling has started, and we are living in it. We are in untested waters, folks. Well, is it is it it is a new era, but is it the Ace era or is it the Switchblade era, Triple J? Oh, I mean. You finished New Year's Dash, Long Allen, right? We are in the Switchblade era, the Cutthroat era. We're going to get to that a little bit later. Knife uh, Pervert era. 
<laughs> I, I know a man called Wired. He, you know, he watched all of Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, Vin Man, have you seen any clips of the show? I, I've seen some clips. Uh, okay, I, maybe I it was it was on it was on the television whenever you were walking you were walking through your house, possibly. Yeah, yeah, I, I, but I have not watched it. In be detail, be but... honest, Vin Man. The only clip you've seen is that clip of everyone at that blast area watching Okada reveal his tights. <laughs> it's fr- from the sounds of it, it, it that was the biggest uh, uh, biggest moment of the night. I like, agree. By, by all accounts, a tremendous show. It, w- it was, and that was the biggest moment of the night for me. Okada revealing his tights and showing that the Rainmaker was back even though he did unfortunately lose that match. I was very bummed about that, but that was my favorite moment of the night, Triple J. Okada tights. I know I was thinking of you. Yeah, I, I was a big fan of that moment. Uh, my favorite moment of the night, it, it happened during that contest as well, but it, it happened after JY hit the Blade Runner for, for the one, two, three. And uh, I, I know you didn't like that so much. You were you told me you were throwing some bottles of water. How, how could you root for that knife pervert? How, wh- why would you, you root for, for any pervert? Exactly, w- Wired. Back me. Is it because I guess yeah. pervert? Is it because sock no, perverts no, and no, pervert pervert stick equals together? Knife pervert. Yeah, wired, perverts you stick together. Them and an, an entire group of people like that. <laughs> I think that's one of the group of peoples we can treat like that. For, uh, for okay, anyone who puts knives near all sorts, putting knives in his pee pee hole and whatever he does, we don't. That we don't weirdo, know. He doesn't do that. that. He freak does Jay White. <laughs> I'm, how could you root for him? So, uh, okay, listen. Let's let's go back. Let's start <laughs> off. Let's start off at the beginning a little bit. Uh, a man called Wired. Are you surprised that Kota Ibushi's head didn't end up in the third row and somebody got to take it home as a souvenir? <laughs> I think there was quite a few moments during this G-1 paper that, and that was the first match why. on the on the main <laughs> card. Oh, we're not even talking pre-show. Come on, we've got to talk to pre-show. Well, if, uh, if somebody wants to talk pre-show, go ahead. I mean, I can't keep track of all the main card. The, the most violent players pulled it out, and I mean, they they won everyone's heart over. I mean, the the team of Yano and and Taguchi is like a match made in heaven. It is, <laughs> oh, the cheater! Oh, it's so the two of them. Oh man, the Yano's the greatest man and the, in the biggest world. cheater in all of wrestling. It oh, was, that's great! It was so fun. And then, the, well, they unfortunately didn't get those six man tag belts, but that was really fun to see. Does anyone know what the hell the, is? Spoiler is, alert: Are those just his gums? Uh, uh, the the unchained gorilla Triple J. You ever see his bottom teeth? He looks it looks terrifying. It's just like gum. Who I, are we talking it's a, about? Uh, uh, Makabe. He's got just like oh okay some sort of weird mouthpiece, or it's just his gums. I can't tell. I wouldn't it, be surprised might, if he's lost all of his teeth. It, it, gingivitis is a hell of a disease, Long Island. It did not prevent <laughs> him from competing at Wrestle Kingdom. Vin Man, what was your favorite moment of Wrestle Kingdom? I, I think it, for me, it was the Young Bucks actually losing a match. What? Why? Yeah, they never, they never lose. Fuck them! <laughs> I, I mean, did they, did they really sell something? To, to, to did they so, sold some? They offense? sold, they sold thirty eight thousand uh, tickets paid inside the well, Tokyo Dome. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it was them selling them, but. Uh, yeah, very surprising. I, I just didn't how are see you it surprised by that? Everybody expected all the all elite wrestlers to lose. I that didn't. was the big thing of the night. Uh, I don't I, know about that. I I did, I did. but I yeah I did not expect that. But I mean that was the, when Doctor and I had the pre show. We talked about how most of the marks expected all elite wrestlers to lose. I didn't. Unfortunately, they all did, and. Well, you know, they all said, well, you know, contracts. And a lot of people complained wired on social media that it took them out of the show because they knew that their favorite all elite wrestlers would not win. Uh, I think that's poppycock. But what do you, what was you, what were you gathering on social, the reaction to Wrestle Kingdom 13? Does everybody agree with me that it was the best ever? Uh, unfortunately, Long Allen, they don't. I think a lot of people were caught up in this whole all elite thing, unfortunately. And it's it's, it's sad because it was a great show. Well, uh, these matches that the all elite members were in were great. Um, oh, the Cody match was, just was super a- fun. Brandy hit a spear <laughs> on Juice Robinson. Oh, was man. Great. That was Juice! <laughs> the flamboyant. The best- now that the big dog's out of commission, that might be the best spear in the business. Well, I mean, um, it, it was a great show, but yeah. Best ever. I don't. It didn't even have a rumble match. I mean, it how did could not I have a New Japan? <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. You're right. And Liger and Tiger Mask both weren't on the card. 
Was Yuji Nagata? Uh, no. Yeah, yo, he was he was in the pre-show, right? Yeah, he was on one of the six man teams. Oh, good, good, okay. Him and him and Ishii had a really violent. I thought it was a shoot fight almost on the New Year Dash Triple J. That oh, kind of Blue was, Justice. And, that was so very cool. uncomfortable to watch. I know. I was wondering: is this is this supposed to be happening? What we're watching it's right already now? Already 2019's most bitter <laughs> feud: Yuji Nagata and Tomohiro Ishii. Vin man, I gotta watch when they get down. Vin man, we gotta watch that one together. Well, and Long Long Allen, you bring up Ishii because uh, him and Zack Saber Jr. I didn't think it was gonna happen. What I saw happen with him, Uh, Zack Saber Jr. took it to him. A human Hasbro stretched him. (laughs) He stretched him. He stretched. How do he stretch? I mean, the little arms, little legs. He he still stretched him, and he got him to tap out. But he pulled pulling apart a gummy bear. I think Dr. Kalsonis would, would say if he could talk today and wasn't so tired from watching wrestling early in the morning, uh, Wired, to, uh, Ishii's eyebrows were on point. I mean, better than any chola I've ever met. <laughs> They're on fleek is, is, the, is the correct um, terminology. Welcome. Eyebrows were on fleek. They were. They were, they were pretty. Uh, also, uh, we, we had a, a, a big, big, big night for LIJ. I mean, they, they cleaned Huge. up. Huge. Los Ingobernables de Japón cleaned up. Moose the Mark w- was the night. Was Lij owning the night? Your favorite part of Wrestle Kingdom thirteen. I mean, look, we we've had so many iterations of Bullet Club and Chaos and all these other factions, and Los Lij has just been kind of in the background. You know, what I mean, are their shirt? How are their shirts selling at Hot Topic? Are they the entire <laughs> best selling oh page pro wrestling tees? I mean, this is. You know, this is their time to step up with most of the Bullet Club leaving for All Elite Wrestling or other greener pastures. I mean, it's time for LIJ to step up and get the spotlight they so desperately deserve. I mean, yeah, they're the most steady and I think uh, cohesive what? unit. Where does Suzuki oh, do now go after oh, this? Oh, Suzuki we know, dude. Oh, there. We know exactly where they go after this. Yeah, I mean, they had a, a rough day at Wrestle Kingdom being placed on the pre-show and losing their – they lost their uh, their junior tag titles, but the next night they let it be known. They're not fucking around. I, Suzuki's well, coming after saying. everybody. Uh, yeah, but LIJ right now is on top of the mountain in t- terms Island. of groups. You guys called it, Long Island. You, if you go back into the archives and listen to the great pre-show that you and the doctor Put did. Put that cigarette um, <laughs> Los is that you know, the LIJ came in in that uh, tag team – championship three-way and sneak sneaked up on everybody right that everybody was talking about the gorillas destiny they needed to, to for the future of the bullet club they need to win this everybody thought the young bucks were out of it and in, in, and in that moment lij snuck in and, and won this the the tag championship they did they they were they were the team not worrying about anything evil and sonata went out there did their thing they're on fire so now we, we've got LIJ on top of the mountain, and Bullet Club is the BCOGs, I guess, and they're doing too sweet down low, Moose the Mark. But, I mean, you you know Uncle Dave. He was at, in Japan. From what he said, talked about after the show, we might – I mean, we're trying to s- – secrets out. We're trying to get Uncle Dave on later this episode. Is that happening, Vin Man? I, I, I know you were missing some episodes <laughs> trying to pull some strings. <laughs> the uh... – uh, corporate policy will not let me discuss that at the moment. Okay, well, if if we could get him corporate on, corporate policy then, won't let me talk about it on the air. We'll we'll get him on, but Moose the Mark, I know you follow Uncle Dave closely, so I'll ask you if we don't have him on. Then, um, Bullet Club BCOGs, it, is there any confidence that the Bullet Club steam is going to maintain and keep going with Jay White in charge and this new kind of pecking order within within the group, or is it is it near death? I mean, you you know, you look at the you look at the great factions through history. You know, you look at you know DX, NWO, the Dungeon of Doom. I mean, most of these guys say what you will about their rosters, but they had solid leadership at the top. You had your your Kevin Sullivan's or your your Triple H's or your you know your your outsiders and Hogan. I mean. What is the line of succession in Bullet Club right now? Who is the the leader? Is a switchblade, Jay White, correct? Knife pervert, yeah. A, Knife a, pervert, yeah. A buff Billy Kidman is is leading the Bullet Club. You think that, a that's, buff like, from, that's, Billy that's, Kidman. that's a problem. <laughs> well, he looks like he he ate Billy Kidman and then put n- knives near his testicles. He's a weirdo. See, it's a see, creep. See, 
I don't know. I, I feel like the Bullet Club is sort of getting to that point it where, I mean, things might have to split up. I mean, when are we going to see a Bullet Club but black and white Bullet and a Fuck Bullet them. Club wolf pack? When are we going to see? Them. But this is the, this is different. This is the Bullet Club. I mean, Fuck this them. thing is, has has surpassed all other um, uh, you know alliances, right? They've had like six different leaders. It's been you know, the original members still there. I just Fuck can't them. see why the Bullet Club would fade into obscurity. Security, just because most of their members are leaving, it, it, it it's the Bullet Club. It, it's it's like any other faction that we've seen in professional wrestling ever. I, see, I'm gonna you're, agree ta- with why, you're talking, at, yeah, of course you will, Triple J and why You're talking out of both sides of your mouth. You, how could you trust this knife pervert to lead the Bullet Club and maintain Hot Topic T-shirt sales and, and, and the relevance of the Bullet Club? They're done. They're done. They got a pervert in charge now. You go from AJ and Kenny Omega and, and Prince Devitt to. The fucking knife pervert. Maybe not that Weirdo. Bad order, Fuck them! Uh, listen, Bullet Club may be getting, you know, not, not to ruin anything for anybody, but they may be getting bigger and, and may also be, be getting uh, better valets once again. I, I don't know what everybody's down with the Bullet Club. You're, you're talking about the, the black and white, the red and black. They already had that. You know, the elite is gone. They, uh, they, they formed a separate group. And I, I'll give you that they did lose those heavyweight tag team championships, but they added another belt to their title. They're still the never open weight champs. And uh, on a side note, if there's any listeners out there that have a, a good isolated version of that new Gorillas of Destiny theme, please hit, hit me up on Twitter at Jumpin' Jacob J because I'm, I'm trying to find the Halloween mask because I just want to walk around the house like the good guy Tom well, McClellan yeah. all day listening to that. <laughs> Triple J, it's interesting you bring up the Gorillas of Destiny because based on the way they had their match at Wrestle Kingdom 13, I would have thought this is your your most favorite uh, tag team in the whole world now, right? Following the rules, making sure they don't break them. Tama Tonga, making sure that uh, Tonga doesn't doesn't break up the uh, the, the New the Year new guy. <laughs> um, they have to be your favorite tag team going now, right? Uh, they're 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 one of them, definitely. I, I mean I, that that entrance. Uh, they're following all the rules. How can they not be? That's like that's triple J to a T. You're you're right. You're right. Well, they they're they are, but then they still got that painted freak Jado breaking rules while they're still out there helping them win, hitting people with kendo sticks. I don't know. Bullet Club is in trouble. Well, anytime no, you got not, this, they are not in trouble. This guy who does knife pee pee things and and all sorts of weirdness with him and Bullet Ghetto Club and the slime, the Edward Scissorhands pants. It's just it's just. Very odd where, where the direction the Bullet Club's gone in. M- meanwhile, Los Ingobernables de Japón, they're, they're unified. And, and Naito coming off a, a victory over Chris Jericho in what might be Chris Jericho's greatest match ever. <laughs> I don't know if it gets any better. You're talking about the greatest of all time had his greatest match ever at Wrestle Kingdom 13. I, I might still be on a high from the show, but I'm, I'm thinking it was. Name me a better Chris Jericho match, Moose the Mark. Oh, um, Chris Jericho. I'm hard-pressed, Long Allen. I mean, you, you kind of you make a good point. I mean, the man just keeps setting new, new, newer and newer peaks for himself. It, it, it was it, un- unbelievable. Adios, Naito. It, it was, I mean, violent. It was athletic. It, Naito was flip-flopping and flying all over the place, Triple J. He was. I think this was actually my favorite match uh, of the night. M- most satisfying. Those those strong style table spots. I mean, I know we had a big one in the main event, which we'll get to in a little bit. But this this was just a this was just a great match. Um, do you think this is the last we've seen of uh, of Chris Jericho in New Japan? Of of this new of the new Chris Jericho, the Clockwork any, Orange Chris Jericho, any Chris Jericho. Oh, he was not at New Year Dash. Well, I, I wasn't going to ruin that for some of our audience. You basically have been ruining it the whole time. Are you I me? already ruined. We already. Oh, was <laughs> Wire going to watch New Year Dash? No, but I'm just saying. Oh, okay. So that's fine. If I knew we were going to talk about it, I might have watched. Yeah, it. you're right. He was, not, he was not there, and I think the money was on him uh, attacking Okada. You know, just working his way through the ranks of the big guns. 
Yeah, may, maybe not. Maybe Chris Jericho is going to be a part of All Elite Wrestling. Maybe he's going to show up in the Royal Rumble. He's the greatest of all time, Vin, man. He could be. He could go anywhere. He yeah, could do that's, anything. That's right. There are no limits on Chris Jericho. A- any promotion will welcome him with open arms. Greatest yeah, Intercontinental that's, that's... Champion in two promotions. Yeah, I, you got you got to say that right now. <laughs> it was, and that was a very violent match. Uh, are you a fan of Chris oh, Jericho violence. taking? Taking cameras and you, putting his middle finger, the Jericho cam. Uh, I I don't know about that. That's was that that's that's a Winnipeg salute, salute, salute cam? Was, I believe it was called right. Is that what Don Callis called it? A Winnipeg salute. Yes. <laughs> that's good. Um, I I think you talk about violence. To, that Corporate image of, uh, won't let me talk about it on the air. <laughs> that 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 image of Nido, you know, basically, you know, straight into the table with his head, looking like a candle oh, on a birthday God. cake. I mean, that was. I thought his his neck was going to snap in two. That that made RVD blush, didn't it? Triple J, that, that, <laughs> that DDT. Oh my God, yeah. he looked like a 1980s break dancer. It yeah, was, Sami Zayn was jealous. Uh, little Guido was a little taken aback by that as well. Did you see that Chris Jericho, after the pile driver, he took on the ramp? I guess his hair got caught in the in the grating, and he had to he lost like a whole chunk of his hair. <laughs> I, I did not. That, that's it, that was probably the it, the least of his injuries. In that it's match, a good though. it's a good thing he's wearing those hats now. Yeah. <laughs> Did he rip it out the, like uh, <laughs> the Nazi from, from Raiders <laughs> of the Lost Ark? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Moose the Mark, you, you watched uh, the, the Naito Jericho match on Axis TV version. What, was there anything specially done? Was that were there commercials in the middle of those matches on the, the Mark Cuban version? There was. I don't believe there was a commercial during Jericho Naito, but there was a, a, a distinct commercial in that what forty eight minute long main event, the longest main event in Tokyo Dome history. They had really? to throw in. Yeah, that according to Dave Meltzer, who again was there loving every second of it uh this is the longest main event in tokyo dome history and obviously one of the best but uh the axis tv <laughs> presentation i mean you really you really felt that they, they are getting all behind combat sports i mean tons of ads for their upcoming lineup on fridays now with new japan women of wrestling and some mma gimmick that i don't quite remember the name of but axis is all in on wrestling it's didn't, a very interesting o- time. Didn't Okada and Omega go like 45 minutes or something like that, that two years ago? I don't think that was at the Tokyo, though, was it? Why would that not be at the Tokyo? That was at the, the, it was in Wrestle Kingdom. They went, yes. Here we go. Well, then Okada they didn't go that long. 46, 45. Well, why are we getting conflicting information? Because I, I do remember that being said on the It's, it's, uh, it's, on, it's, on the it's just in his, it's in Dave's DNA. Are they trying to write off any, any mention of Kenny Omega? Fuck them! Uh oh well oh that might be a good a good, a good quick point well you, you think they're trying to erase the I like did you see Suzuki called Kenny Omega the wannabe human video game character <laughs> 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 so he was still after after Wrestle Kingdom he was still shit talking Kenny Omega even though Kenny Omega did lose that IWGP Heavyweight Championship and was not there the next night another spoiler there wired. Should have watched. And who knows what's next for Kenny Omega? That is the big question. What is next for the former IWGP heavyweight champion? Vin Man, what's your prediction? I think he'll continue to wrestle in New Japan Pro Wrestling. You think? Yeah. You think he just took the night off the next day? Yeah. I mean, a golden lover does that every now and then. The other golden lover, what, he, he, he didn't that take a shot up to New Year's Dash? That was... The, no, the both Golden Lovers were gone from New Year New Year Dash. Kenny oh. Omega probably by choice. Kota Ibushi by concussion. Triple J, uh, you go ahead. Tell everybody the text you sent me after you watched the first match. Um, I'm trying to recall. I don't. I don't have it on my phone right Regarding now. Regarding Kota Ibushi being concussed and stretchered out at the beginning of the show, uh, yeah, he's something probably about. We're lucky that his head didn't fall off. <laughs> well, uh, you said you you said you know it's going to be a hell of a show when oh, someone yeah. gets stretchered out the first match. I mean, <laughs> yes, and, and I guess tech, it was a human stretcher. It, it was it, he was on the back brace, and people were just carrying him. 
Moose so, the Mark. Vin, Vin, Vin Man, it's not like they were just using a, a table like you and I have seen in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Moose the Mark, do you think that was a work a work or a shoot or a worked shoot? Kota Ibushi stretchered out what, match one. Was that the was that the planned finish? I mean, I know I know there's been a lot of controversy over that that huge forearm slash elbow right to the sweet spot on the back of the head, but uh, apparently that wasn't the uh, injury that uh, allegedly caused Kota Ibushi to get the concussion. Apparently, it was a series of kicks. Oh in yeah, the corner that uh, that you know rung his bell, as it were. I don't believe this is a a, a work to use the to use a certain phrase that fans use. I don't believe this is a work. Uh, I believe this is a uh, this is an actual incident, and I don't. I think New Japan, they have the taste. You know, they have, they have the good taste. They're not stuffing tampons in people's mouths or uh, oh, doing any other oh crazy God. things like that. I mean, this they've is, got a know, knife pervert in their main event. What are you talking about? But <laughs> also, a- did you, did you, look, Kodobushi was knocked out after that elbow. I mean, he was not even moving. The referee it, didn't want the match to continue. It, it was the, it was the kicks, match. though. It was the kicks. Those were called. Okay, they call those receipts, Moose the Mark, because. Kota had a vicious knee to the back of Osprey's head earlier in the match that caught him clean, and I'm surprised they didn't concuss the new never open weight champion. So I, all's fair in in pro, love and pro wrestling, I, I say. So Kota, Kota got what you know was coming. He got kicked in the head in the corner in a tree of woe. That's what happened, right? That's the that's the, what most people are saying happened. The kicks, I, I believe so. Yeah. No, just Will Ospreay is a piece of shit, and I can't stand him watching him wrestle. What honest. are you talking about? He's the oh, he might be the, the best thing going in New York. He's the worst ever. thing ever. No, he's, he's the worst. Great gymnast. He's the worst. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, uh, you know this guy. Twenty two, twenty twenty two. I'm sure with a horse. You know this guy is, is tremendous. But well, you know a wrestler. Man, you're, 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 what are you talking you're, about? You're, he's the never open weight champion, and he said everybody said they wanted me to uh, change my style to shorten because I was shortening my career. I did, and now I'm going to shorten everyone else. His career, and he is man, the like capitation the- elbow. He's gr- he's dressed like Robin Hood, stealing from the rich to give to the poor. Will Ospreay's a legend. Legend, so then, a man, legend. You'd, you'd, you'd rather see him on the pommel horse or a floor routine. Yeah, is where I, mean, I would have rather seen him anywhere, right? Technically, but I guess he, that's where he's well suited. He's, he's got great music. Let's not take anything away from that. I'm elevated. Is anyone else elevated with me on Will Ospreay? Moose the mark. Where do you go- come out on the never open weight champ? I think Will Ospreay is the future. I think he is going to. I mean, he's the future of professional Maybe wrestling. The, the future of the junior the, division. The, I, I, the man weighs he's less than a porterhouse. How is that going to happen? <laughs> he's the <laughs> he's the never open weight champion. <laughs> Why are and I eat steaks bigger than him? For, are you for looking, every day? Did you you didn't obviously weren't looking at it. He looked jacked in that match, didn't he? Yeah, so on, you're a body guy. Yeah, we're not talking about Zack Saber Jr. here. We're talking about <laughs> no. human Gumby. Yeah, he's proportional. <laughs> Yeah, but I, okay, I'll I'll say this. I mean, oh, I shucky, I shucky. feel like the never open weight title was all about strong style and, and guys like Ish Goto being in that. And now you got you know you got too many flips in this never open weight division. It's okay, like whenever, we, it's like whenever you? Bully Ray and Kevin Nash tried to compete in the X division. What are you talking the, about? <laughs> we the over under was set at 69 and a half full revolutions in that match. It was well under 69 and a half. They they it, and talk about strong style, the loser was stretchered out from a concussion. That that was strong style that match. A lot of people think that was the ma- match of the night. W- Wired, I know you saw on social media people love that match. Yeah, I know. People love the match. They were, yes, they were yes, wondering yes, about what was going yes, on yes, um, yes. with Ibushi. And then I guess people kind of like Will Ospreay. I don't understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Will but, yeah. Ospreay is a fine athlete. I won't take any of that away from him. He's so just, am I. He, he, he just needs to stay in his lane in the juniors, you know, in the junior division. <laughs> well, Moose the Mark, Moose the Mark, we didn't get your comments on it. Kenny Omega, the former, the 66th IWGP heavyweight champ. Lost to the ace, Tanahashi. Where do you think Kenny Omega goes next? What's next for the best bout machine? I mean, obviously, you know, this whole match was just a repudiation of Kenny Omega's entire philosophy. I mean, his his thesis heading into this match was, my style is superior. The American hard-hitting independent indie guy style is, is no, you know, the ace, you know, clean-cut, 
air guitar style of Tanahashi has no place in 2019. And, well, it turns out it still does because he soundly defeated the best bout machine. Uh, soundly is I, – I don't think you know what that, that word means. I didn't see any interference. I didn't see any any shenanigans. Well, I okay, saw a high what fly about, flow. What about right Tanahashi going against you know his style per se and hitting that high fly high fly flow off the top rope through a table? Long out on the ta- tables well, is something he that he he didn't hit it. He didn't hit it on Kenny Omega. He hit well, it through the table. He hit the table. But maybe he, in his mind he hesitated because this wasn't what an ace would do. An ace would never well, try to attack did. someone through a table. But he, he hesitated. calls himself that. Look, I, I, it's you know I, I think Kenny's going to have to have a sober realization. He's like, this is my style. This is what I've set my career working towards this goal, and I cannot beat Tanahashi, the man wrestling the same style since the eighties. I mean, uh, you know that's got to be a sobering moment for him. I mean, he's going to have to you know realize what what. Where can I go next? Where do I take my talents next? Do I stay in New Japan and try to reclaim my throne? Do I go to WWE and take this massive, massive offer? Or do I go to All Elite Wrestling and try to carve my own path? I mean, this is the most fascinating story this 2019 opens up. It, it is. It's. I mean, and it's January, which means a, a lot of things can happen, right? With, with Kenny Omega, because that Royal Rumble, that's prime for a guy like him. Or maybe All Elite Wrestling coming up on January 8th, two days away as of this live on tape, Brain Buster Radio, All Elite Wrestling in Jacksonville, Florida at the Jaguar Stadium there. What do you expect at that big rally, Vin Man? Do you expect Kenny Omega? Do you expect Shad Khan to come out out of a, out of a, a portal, out of a big tube like Super Mario? What, what do you think happens? Uh, well, there's, yeah, they're going to make some big announcements. Yeah, you know, they're going to get, you know, they're probably going to give away some t-shirts to get the, you know, the 50 fans that show up riled up. 50 fans? Is that what you expect? SmackDown is in town that same night, and, and I expect, you know, everybody to be at the SmackDown event. Oh well, they're not happening at the same. It's time, later right? at the. It's later in the day, though. But no, SmackDown pre-show. No! Are, are, no! are you really going to be able to get to both? I I don't know, but I I would expect, you know, you know they're you know they're going to be hooting and hollering about how they're going to change the wrestling business forever and yada 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 and you know they may have you know they could just get some guy to show up and they could be like, oh, Kenny Omega's here and nobody would know the difference. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know. Because yeah, <laughs> people, oh, you know, probably half the people have only heard about this guy or seen him in gift form. Oh. So they wouldn't be able to really identify him. I, I don't I don't know if that's the case. Brainiacs, let us know what you think Kenny Omega's going to do next. Let us know if you're going to attend the rally in Jacksonville. Tweet it, read it, count it, shout it. Be all about it at the Brain Busters on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Or call the Brain Buster Radio hotline at 412 412- 4075 BBR. Call it any time. Kids, get your parents' permission. It's open 365, 24 7, all the time. You could call and chime in, be on the show, even. It's right there for you, the BBR hotline. 1 900 909 9900. And with that, guys, we did get it. He's here. I just got, we're going to bring him into our, 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 our official Marburger chat here. Our special guest for this very special episode of Brain Buster Radio, where we have everyone here. The doctor is in. Musta Mark is even here. And now we have our special guest to talk about Wrestle Kingdom 13 some more and his experience at the Tokyo Dome. It is the one. It is the only. It is everyone's favorite uncle. Dave Meltzer is on Brain Buster Radio. Hello, Uncle Dave. Welcome to the program. <coughs> Hey, Long Island, how's it going? Yeah, well, really smoky in Tokyo. Are you back yet from Japan, <laughs> Uncle Dave? No, I'm Were still you, over here. I mean, I've got about you, you know, get six, sick, seven, a lot of travel. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just something I've been dealing with for the last, you know, eight or nine months or so. But I mean, no, I feel great. I mean, it's the first time I've been to Japan in, uh, you know, like 10 years. 15 years, maybe longer. And, you know, I'm just having a great time uh, meeting all my friends. Uh, you know, everyone who came up to me is just so nice, taking so many pictures. They love my starter jackets. Uh, it's, it's been a, a great time. That was a sick San Jose starter jacket. I saw a shark starter jacket he was wearing. Cool. Man. Real cool. <laughs> Uh, well, Uncle Dave, we got a lot of questions for you today about your trip to Tokyo. Was that your first Wrestle Kingdom? 
No, no, no. That was my first Wrestle Kingdom. I've been to several, you know, Wrestle Kingdoms, you know, back when they were good. Uh, and, and you know, I mean, they're still good now, but they're good in a, a different way. I mean, there's different kinds of good. And you, you could say they're better than they've ever been. But you could also say that what once has been is also good in a different way. But it, no, this, this is not my first wrestling, Wrestle Kingdom, no. Well, no, every, Dave, oh, go ahead, Triple J. Sorry, uh, uh, right, Dave. Uh, you know, at least on the English commentary that I was watching, Kevin Kelly announced that the paid attendance was thirty-eight thousand and some odd. Uh, does that sound accurate to you? From you know the sources <laughs> you're hearing from? <laughs> yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely. I mean, this this is uh, you know it was a legit sellout. Uh, this is the biggest figure they've ever had the biggest house they've ever had at the tokyo dome i don't know if it's just for wrestling or for other things i mean there was the time the pope came to the tokyo dome and you know kind of got a a bigger attendance uh you know there was the time uh that uh what's ario speedwagon sold out the tokyo dome (laughs) and you know there's a lot cheap trick uh sold out the tokyo dome i mean the the numbers there don't really last yeah, no, they're I, 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 absolutely. Are, are they great? Ba- they're great bands, but are are they wrestling? I mean, I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know if they incorporated, you know, maybe some matches, you know, in the pre-show to warm up or something like that. But I, no, as as far as wrestling, New Japan wrestling in the Tokyo Dome, yes, this, this is absolutely the biggest gate they've ever had. Now, Dave, this is Vin Man here. Uh, Hi, Vin Man. I, I I know uh, on. Um, <laughs> Uh, your Wrestling Observer newsletter that's going to be coming out later this week and, and on Wrestling Observer Radio. Uh, you're going to be revealing your, your matches, uh, match grades. C- could you let us in on just a little a little peek uh, on what match uh, got the highest grade and, and how many stars you gave it? I mean, you know, I, I, can't, I can't, I'm not going to say how many stars I'm giving out, although I will say that at least the main event is Absolutely going to be at least five stars. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was one of the top. <laughs> it was one of the top maybe six or four best matches I've ever seen at the Tokyo Dome. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I can't really say which. I got to watch it again. You know, I was there live. You know, certain things you have to see close up. But you no, know, I mean, it was definitely in the top four and a half matches I've ever seen. I mean, sometimes, you know, you can make the argument if it had gone like seven minutes, seven minutes and 22 seconds longer, it, it might have been just, just you know, that little bit better. But, it, you know, who could say? We're going to have to watch it and, uh, you know, just just, just see, see what happens. You know, the, well, let, the, let, let the stars fall where they may. Well, Uncle, Uncle Dave, speaking of stars, I know you can't reveal your match rating stars on our program because you got your own, but maybe you could give us star ratings on some other things that happened if, to you in Japan and your experiences, if, if you could oblige us. That's a good po- uh, and that leads to the question I was going to ask. Were, were you able to eat at the Ribera Steakhouse, and yes, were you no. given a jacket? Uh, I was able to eat at the Ribera Steakhouse. I was able to replace my jacket from 1972 because somehow I'm even more jacked now than, than I was then. So it was really nice. You know, I got to go. The proprietor's there, and he met me. And, you know, once I explained to him who I was and, you know, that – now I'm not a wrestler, but I still should be able to get a jacket. You know, I mean, there was some discussion, some arguments about that, but I did eventually, you know, get my jacket. Uh, I would have liked the the circumstances to be a little more peaceful. You know, I would have liked, you know, not to have to just sort of grab it and run out of the restaurant before the police were called. But, you know, I mean, it's a different Whoa. culture. They don't know, you know, exactly who I am. I mean, I write 80,000 words every week, but those words are in English. So true. You know, the, the, my, 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 my reputation may not precede me. So there were some issues getting my jacket, but I do have it right now. It, it, it is, you know, on me. I could, you know, feel my biceps just straining at the satin material of the sleeves every time I move my giant arms. Uh, it, it is, it's, it's great. You know, I'm very happy to have one. How many yeah. stars, how many stars do you give the steak at Ribera Steakhouse? Uh, you know, I ordered medium rare, uh, very garlicky. Uh, for a steak, you know, a lot of, a lot of butter though, which I always appreciate. And who, you know, I mean, this is probably, uh, three, three, three and three and three quarters, maybe. Really? Uh, is that it? Three, and three quarters. I mean, well, you're talking just steak or are you including sides? I mean, because it's I the totality. just the steak, just the steak. Oh, steak itself. Easily, easily 
four and a half. But you wow, know, it's mean, a good steak. But you know, the sides. I mean, you know, it's a meal. It's a totality of a meal. It's everything. It's the it's the ambiance. It's how the bathrooms look that night. It's, it's how fast your service is. Whether someone next to you is is talking too loudly or not. I mean, it's it's you know, it's a, it's a holistic kind of procedure. And uh, yeah, yeah, the three th- three and three quarters, maybe three and a half. I, I, I'm not sure. But, but Mr. Meltzer, why are you here again? Just just letting you know, not a fan, but. Um, I, I still want to talk about maybe if you can't give us the ratings of your actual match of the actual matches. Is there? Is, can we talk about maybe parts of the show like Okada's tights reveal? Like, how many stars would you give that? Oh, it would be you know eight, 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 nine, ten stars. I mean, did you see that viral video? <sighs> that that seems about right. Pub? You see that viral video of everyone sitting in like a pub and watching it on a satellite broadcast, and everyone just going nuts. Yeah, we saw we did yeah. see it. that's that Vin Man was was astonished at that, but he, he couldn't <laughs> believe there was a blast area that big. Do you know where that blast area was? Yeah, I think it was in Spain watching the World Cup two years ago. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean who who's to say? Well, Uncle Dave, <laughs> Uncle Dave, we know that you're a night owl and and you like you like going out on the town and where you're friends with Rocky Romero. So, what, what, how many stars would you give Rapungi uh, at three a.m.? Oh, three a.m. I mean, there's you know, there's, there's just I mean, there's a lot going on. You know, I mean, we're doing karaoke. We're in the little room. It's very different from you know American karaoke, where you know it's just sort of like a, a big shared experience. Um, love hotels, always fun. Rocky Romero, you know, the service is exceptional, and uh, you know, yeah, I went to some game centers, went to Akihabara, uh, try to find some did, old. Did you go to Super Potato, Mr. Meltzer? Uh, I do go to Super Potato. Uh, I still don't understand why it's named that. But and did Rocky Romero let anybody else sing? Uh, I I don't know. I, I I was in the bathroom until someone knocked on the door and said it's your turn to sing. So then I came out, and then after I was done, I just went right back in the bathroom, uh, just so I wouldn't have to just see or you know hear anyone else singing. It was just you know I I just sang when it was my turn, and then I just kind of just switched off. Uh, what about uh, I know you you hung out with the Tokyo Pimp. You, you put on social media hanging out with Yujiro and some of his uh, girls. How many stars would you give Yujiro's girls? Yujiro's girls. I mean, you know, I can't rate each individual one. You know, by itself, that's that just take too much time. And you know, obviously, I mean, such a busy week. You know, with the I mean between me and Gene and Priscilla Kelly. I mean, there's so much going on this week. I I, I just don't have the time to rate individual girls, or else. You know, my, the observer might 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 be ninety thousand words or a hundred thousand words, but I mean, I'll, it was a good time. It was great. I don't know if it's going to be you know some of the best girls that I've ever experienced in Japan, but I mean, it's it's definitely up there. You know, I'd were say, they girls? Were they girls? I mean, they were women. They were women. <laughs> okay. Yes. They were. They were women. Yes. So, 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 Uncle Dave, uh, you know, in in the presence of the knife pervert, you know, uh, Jay White, what what kind of pervert would you consider yourself? <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know, I'm probably like a, uh, I would say a keyboard pervert, or maybe, <laughs> you know, like a, a a VHS tape pervert, a Xerox <laughs> machine pervert. I mean, just all the tools of the trade. You know, I mean, he uses knives. I use. You know my 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 fingers, my brain, my my voice. I mean, I, I'm just I'm just an all around pervert, I guess. You know, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> utility pervert. He's he's a pervert. He's a pervert. Uh, Uncle Dave, we we really appreciate you coming on talking about your experience in in Japan. Uh, overall, Uncle Dave takes Tokyo. How many stars was your tr- your trip? It was all the star, all the stars above me, all the stars below me. It was just. Uh, just an amazing trip, you know. I mean, you know, if I didn't have my wife and my, and my my kids, you know, maybe maybe I'd love to go over there, just sort of start life again, you know, learn Japanese and just sort of try to blend in and just live live out the rest of my days as a Japanese man living in Akihabara. I mean, that's would I like to do that? Yes, you know. Do I see it happening? Mm, but you know, I mean, it, it was just an amazing experience. It, I'd say seven and one quarter stars. Wow. I can't wait to go to Tokyo. Anything left for, for Uncle Dave Vinman? I think that's it. <laughs> Triple J? Thank you for your time, Mr. Meltzer. Wired? Go away. 
All right, Uncle Dave, get, get please get better. You sound awful. All right. Thank you for your insight, and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you somewhere down the road. All right, thank you for having me, guys. Uncle Dave Meltzer, Brainiacs. Oh, Moose, uh, Moose did you want to? Oh, geez. Moose. Oh, wait, 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 Moose. I just got my mic Moose. working again. I just got my mic working again. Did we miss Dave? You had your shit muted yeah. the whole time, you dummy. Ugh. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, that, that, that does it for our Wrestle, 13, Wrestle Kingdom 13 uh, conversation. Brainiacs, if you have any other comments or concerns or questions about it, holler at us. You want to converse about Wrestle Kingdom 13, we're always here for you at the Brain Busters on social media. Let's go to this big-ass Raw vid, man. Yeah, this is what it's all about right here. Yeah, you look at some of the names announced for this Raw. You know, always the... the yes. The Raw of the Nash, the same night as the College Football National Championship, always a huge Raw. You're going to have John Cena showing up for the first time on Raw in a long time. Braun Strowman making his return to Raw. Uh, Brock Lesnar, the Universal Champion, is going to be on Raw. Paul Heyman's going to be with him. You know you're going to have a few McMahons on Raw. And you're going to have the immortal, one and only Hulk Hogan is going to be making his return to Monday Night Raw. This is maybe the most hyped I've been for a Raw since Raw 25 last year. Really? Yes. It's it's that oh, big. Yeah. Bi- bi- oh, this is bigger than the night after WrestleMania. This oh, is right big- now. Yeah. Easily. The, the, easily. All these returns on the same night, not not to mention the Royal Rumble taking shape. We've had some uh, Monday Night Raw combatants already declare yep. dur- during house shows that they're going to be in the Rumble. Seth Rollins, Finn Balor at house shows this week. Triple J, they declare for the Rumble. Are you anticipating this Raw to be as big as Vin Man just hyped it up to be? Uh, he's hyping it up very big uh, to the point that I'm going to – I mean, I'm going to have two screens going, obviously, for, you know – for the other ball game, for that, that uh, I, I think so. I, I think it'll hold. Uh, I may have to tap into the, the telephone pole line in case I need some more juice. But uh, <laughs> juice! You know, I, <laughs> uh, a lot of returns, like like Vin Man said, you got Hogan coming back to eulogize the great Mean Gene Okerlund. Uh, you got Cena coming. Is Becky? I'm thinking maybe Becky Lynch is going to follow him. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, she's got a, well, she's got a big match she's got to prepare for on SmackDown does, Live the following night. Tri- big triple threat to determine the number one contender. Yeah, that's that, a huge match. Carmella, Charlotte, and the man. I mean, that 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 might be bigger what, than Raw. What, maybe, but the man might be more the man, for that. The man and John Cena look like they have some unfinished business there. Do you think the man comes and steals John Cena's spotlight on Raw? <laughs> That would be the best shit. She might steal Hogan's spot. <laughs> he can do whatever she wants. Moose, <laughs> Moose and Mark, what are you most? What are you anticipating the most on this big night of returns on Monday Night Raw? I mean, I'm just anticipating Raw being live again. I'm just anticipating Raw being that tune-in, can't miss, shareable, viral experience that you, we just in, embrace at the same time as millions of other people in the WWE universe. I'm not a fan of tape shows. I just don't feel compelled to watch it, no matter how amazing the action or how many incredible title changes happen with the U.S. title or whatnot. I, I, I'm a sucker for live TV, Long Island. And I, I just can't wait for Experience Raw live. Once again. We need, we, we need to mark on some of our other shows talking about live television. And yeah, we like need. That, uh, we need to <laughs> we need to start cutting some uh, Brainbuster Radio uh, coming up soon calendar promos and have Moose the Mark voice them. That was great. <laughs> Brainbuster Radio live in New York City. <laughs> yeah. Moose the Mark Hulk Hogan returning on this night to talk about his good friend Mean Gene Okerlund. Uh, do you think Hogan's just going to come out there straight up talk about Mean Gene? Do you think he gets involved in, in the in the goings on of Monday Night Raw at all? What, what do you think happens with Hulk Hogan? And is this a great time for Hogan to return? I mean, is this is I guess the question is is this the one off or is this part of the fresh start? You know, so far the fresh start has pretty much just meant that all the McMahons show up on every show, which is not that fresh really i mean i don't know could we see hulk hogan as a new general manager policy won't let me talk about it on the air can we see hulk hogan sort of usurp stephanie and triple h and become the ceo and cfo of wwe all in one person i i I don't know i don't know what the plan is for hulk hogan is he just going (laughs) to come out there you know mislabel what 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 arena the raw is taking place in and then just (laughs) 
cut a couple, <sighs> say a couple kind words about Mr. Okerlund. I, I don't know. It's live. I, we don't know anything. It's live. It's, it's going to happen. It's live, pal. Do you think he could come out in blackface? No, that's not going to happen. I that, I doubt that. Beth, maybe, maybe orange face. Maybe some like Hollywood era, you know, drawing in the beard. I don't know if that counts, but uh, no, I do not anticipate Hulk's going to do anything controversial. Would it be a good political move for Hulk Hogan to come out and endorse Apollo Cruz as the next great star in WWE? <laughs> the guy, give the give him the rub. All right, after watching him, uh, uh, Apollo Cruz, oh, gorilla press slam. Rum, uh, I mean, my goodness. I mean, I mean <laughs> well, that that performance in that battle royal that was amazing. Just pressing people over his head the whole time. That might be my favorite move of 2019. Uh, a gorilla press. Apollo Cruz's press. And you got to think about right now. I mean, it's early to make predictions for the Royal Rumble, but if Apollo Cruz is in it, you know, you got to, you know, well, I know he may a, not. He has a favorable draw. Yeah, he may not be an odds on favorite, but he, he certainly. You know, display the you know what it takes to get it done. I mean, in we'll, that situation. we'll have to talk about that for the Rumble episode, Triple J, because Vin Man and I were off air talking about how how much of an advantage it is to be able to press someone in a Rumble because there's no way they can avoid uh, landing on the outside, both feet touching the floor if you press them sky high over your head like that. Apollo yeah, right Cruz has one of the best weapons for the Rumble. There's no way to counter that. And I would love to see Hulk Hogan teach him how to press people properly. Like whenever, he <laughs> like whenever he lifted the, he pressed the giant above his head. <laughs> he did, he did it. Hulk Hogan returns. Braun Strowman. You think he's fully healed? Wired. Braun Strowman. What's the word on social media? I know you follow a lot of doctors on Twitter. What are they saying about Braun's elbow? Well, Doctor Oz hasn't really talked about um, Braun Strowman too much, but on if you go to the new WWE dot com. You'll see some 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 real cool videos about what what these treatments are doing for Braun Strowman and and you know what I gotta say I I don't like Braun Strowman's chances I mean you and Vidman try and try to keep your hands where we can see them but you can't it's hard to beat Brock Lesnar at a hundred percent and if you're at ninety nine point nine percent good luck and and that's where. And Braun Strowman looks like he's like at 60% right now. I don't know if I give him much of a chance. I mean, again, we're not giving predictions yet, but I mean, oh, Brock Lesnar. This is not a prediction. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not giving away spoilers yet either. But Brock Lesnar, he's already beaten Braun Strowman once. And that was when Braun Strowman was 100%. And he still couldn't get the job done. It's true. It's going to be... Uh, Interesting to see if Braun Strowman has a new strategy. Is that monster able to strategize, change up his game plan at all since it didn't work the first time? And I don't know, maybe that polar bear plunge helped heal the elbow a little bit. He did that polar. <laughs> did you go to Musa Mark? Did you do the polar bear plunge with Braun Strowman? Uh, no, you know, the, the, the East river is, uh, not the most suspendable, no matter what the temperature is. I am not, uh, not taking any plunges anytime. I mean, uh, don't probably, be a probably, pussy. Uh, Build up your immunity. There's a lot of good chemicals in that water that'll Moose help you. Mark, can you swim? Yes, I'm a good swimmer. I have a pool. My my parents have a pool. Mooses can swim. Yeah, moose can swim. Mo moose. I'm pretty sure I saw. It looked like some people were in that river after they did the plunge, but it seemed like they were sleeping or, or doing the back float out. in that river. Uh, it's possible that the frigid temperatures. It's possible the frigid temperatures of the water just, you know, froze all the cells in their body, yeah. waiting them for. I, I'm, I'm not a doctor, so I, I won't say. Uh, uh, Long Island, let's not forget the first ever episode of a moment of list debuts. Now these are different than I just think those. That's uh, sexist. You know those those PSAs that we saw in the past. This is the first ever talk show uh, hosted by a female, and of course. Uh, you know, Alexa Bliss is big business. She's locked down the Raw Women's Champion Ronnie for uh, you know her first guest on that. On that, so. Holy balls. that that's Ronnie. another thing. That's another first to look to. It is, yeah. Alexa Bliss hosting. She yeah. said it won't be a disgusting pit. It's going to be an elegant talk show. This yeah. is going to be. This is maybe. The, maybe the this most is the most important exciting thing we got to be looking forward. To. They, I think of anything going on on Raw. Unless the man interferes with John Cena's return or Hogan's return, the, this the the moment of bliss is going to affect the main event of WrestleMania the most. That's my one prediction for Raw. It's going to affect the main event yeah. of WrestleMania. Yeah, it's going to involve the main event of WrestleMania, uh, or maybe I allude to it. Yes, 
I, I totally anticipate I, I, that. How many? How do we know what the main event of WrestleMania is? And we don't. I, but, it, it's Charlotte. <laughs> unless, unless the big dog's back. I already told you, it's Charlotte. How many uh, segments do you think the man is going to be involved with? I'm hoping m- multiple. I'm hoping <laughs> as many. Nobody could ever top Finn Balor. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but Finn Balor's in like at least five segments on Raw every week. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody really pays attention, but Finn Balor gets a lot of screen time. I'm hoping the man gets that much this week. I mean, those Irish—they just hog the camera. That's what they're all about. Uh, they do. It's in. It's in their blood. Uh, camera hogging. Uh, but the moment of bliss, Triple J. You're right. That is. That is also something. This RAW is a big ass RAW, and the next night, the big triple threat match. What a week for WWE coming up. What a week for professional wrestling kicking off 2019 Brainiacs, and we've got some big news. Two big items to talk about this week as we get into headlines on Brainbuster Radio. This week on Brainbuster Radio headlines, we pay homage to the greatest interviewer of all time, Mean Gene Okerlund. And a new spot has a lot of people talking. This week, Brain Buster Radio Headlines is brought to you by Marburger Feminine Products. Marburger <laughs> Feminine Products. For all the lady brain busters out there, brainiacs out there, know that Marburger Feminine Products will make you feel fresh, make you feel, feel great, and they'll keep you healthy. Marburger Feminine Products at any Marburger Mart, CVS, Rite Aid, or uh, your local grocery store. Uh, Vin Man, let's start with Mean Gene Okerlund. Yeah, uh, you talk about stick men in this business. You talk about uh, particularly WWF. If you look at, you know, think about all the great interviews from 1984 to about 1993, and Mean Gene was involved in just about every one of them. This guy, you know, he he was he he made all this stuff happen. All these great interviews, uh, he told the story. This that's how good this guy was. Uh, an icon in this sport, probably one of the most recognizable superstars of all time. I I I put him up there as the greatest interviewer of all time. Oh, he's better than Stern, better than Johnny Carson, any television interviewer ever. You name them, Mean Jeans, Cream of the Crop, Tops. Kids, get your parents' permission. I, I'd agree with that. I mean, who had to deal with as many colorful personalities as he did on a regular basis? Yeah, that's right. And you not only remember this, I mean, Gene Okerlund, a journalism major, really honed his craft in the AWA. You know, uh, got that repertoire with a lot of the guys that you saw up in New York on television uh, in Vern Gagne's promotion and then and then of course to uh world championship wrestling uh and, i mean Vinman, whenever you're trying to interview the dungeon of doom you gotta have some big balls uh, exactly you know you know wwf in the late 80s early 90s you know hulkamania running wild wwf was at the top of the sport and gene was right there and then all of a sudden in 93, 94, Gene moves to WCW, and then that becomes the biggest promotion. Wherever this guy went, whatever he Put touched, it turned the gold. Yeah, he, he brought a sense of class, a uh, big fight feel. Yes. Uh, he, he, right. He, you could really not enough people credit Mean Gene Okerlund for the shift from WWF to WCW being the major promotion in the U.S. in the 90s. Mean Gene Okerlund, a big part of that, Moose the Mark. I, no one will ever be as good as at their job as Gene Mean was at his. He really was incredible. I, I, I want to, you know, if I could point out one specific interview, he just had such a talent for, you know, getting these guys in an era of unscripted promos. It was his job to get them to, you know, riled up and to get them talking and to, to help them, you know, deliver the best material they possibly could. And I just keep thinking about, I think it was King of the Ring 93 with uh, Bret Hart versus Mr. Perfect. They're doing oh, the backstage yeah. promo. And, and, and Mean Gene's just like, now, Brett, I believe your father beat the legendary Kurt Larry the Axe Henning. And, 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 you know, Brett's like, yeah, that's right. I think he did. And Kurt's like, no, you never beat my dad. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate instigator. Yeah, the ultimate instigator. That was his job. He's incredible. It's, 
The man's a, the man was a genius at what he did, and I, it's just it sickens me every time I see you know Charlie Caruso and her just just you know my guest at this time, Long well, Allen, Long well, Allen. <laughs> You hosted Rainbow Radio. Up Charlie I don't, I don't want to take yeah, I don't want to take the time to bash the current uh, people trying to do what the greatest of all time did. Uh, you know, it's just it's that it's that that's what makes him so great, Mean Gene, is that there are so many people that have been hired to do what he did and really they are just given a formula to stick to and they're not a lot because nobody is trusted the way Mean Gene was trusted by well, he, any company. He's the McDonald's. He's the McDonald's, right, to everybody else's Burger King, right? He he he's he's number one. No one's ever gonna touch him. So no one goes for that anymore. They have to be settling for number two. And that's because Mean Gene did so well for so long. Uh, you know, people in, in in the office that I work in were coming to me with this news. They don't even watch wrestling. They don't even they look at me when I wear my Alexa Bliss. T-shirt. Cultural icon, that, yes. And everybody recognizes this man. I mean, he was the face you would recognize yeah, next to Hogan, right? What, what's Hogan next to Mean Gene was? It's just a poster. It's not. It's not an interview, right? So that's what Mean Gene Okerlund was. Uh, just an icon and 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 the best that this business had ever seen and ever will see uh, in that position. Uh, I think you put it perfectly there. Why we could leave it at that. Mean Gene Okerlund, uh, gone but not forgotten. The greatest of all time. Never will be another one like him. May he rest in peace forever in a hundred years. Uh, there would be no Hulkamania without him. The WWE might not even be around without without Mean Gene ever. It would it might have fizzled. <laughs> it would not have felt like a real sporting event. It, 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 it may have been like Ring of Honor if he oh. if he was if he wasn't around. Uh, moving on here on headlines, uh, the other big item of the week. Uh, well, I guess that all elite wrestling stuff, but we kind of touched upon that earlier. The big rally in Jacksonville. Moose the Mark, do you have any intelligent things to say about it before, real quick? <laughs> just just very interesting that SmackDown Live is happening, you know, just right across the street, apparently. I mean, this is, uh, you know, this is the opening salvo in the new, the new wrestling war. Very interesting. And it, will it be a war? Because we're hearing that, you know, Performers in AEW are going to get paid comparable to what WWE pays. Yeah, I mean this this is this is how you do it. You got to open up the purse strings, you know. I mean, we're going to see. You know, there's so much talent out there. You know, you could get you know your Damian Sandows and your Rybacks and your you know now that you're throwing around this kind of money, you can attract the top caliber talent that WWE let slip through their fingers. Uh, yeah, that's those are two huge names that I didn't huge think about. Names. And now, now that I'm you, you got me interested if they're involved. Do you, uh, Vin Man, you do know that Goldberg follows all elite wrestling on social media. You know, I follow a lot of things on social media. I'm not involved with. <laughs> But, you, know, you, know, you know, you put it, you put it uh, right, Moose the Mark. That you know, the way to to make a small fortune in wrestling is you got to start out with a large fortune, and and this man's got a lot of money, and if he's willing to spend it, you Tony know, Khan, yeah, maybe maybe they could do something. You know, you know, maybe they could get a 1.0 in the in the in, on TBS or something like Tri- that. Triple J, do you think Tony Khan is calling Vince McMahon on the cell phone right now, telling him he's getting into the wrestling business? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tri- triple, uh, I, oh triple J, I can't wait for the DVD in <laughs> <laughs> several years that says that. <laughs> the rise and fall of AEW. Moose and Mark, <laughs> I want your official prediction on All Elite Wrestling. Is it going to be a, a, something that actually threatens WWE status as the numero uno? I don't think it's going to threaten the status, but that doesn't mean it can't succeed. Like the 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 the, the win state here is not put WWE out of business. Of course not. Yeah, the it's just to make here. money and yeah, yeah, and yeah. be be yeah. successful business wise and get people yeah. attracted yeah. to the product. If you look at social media, everybody's so oh my god, finally somebody with enough money to bring down Vince McMahon and blah blah blah. That's not what it's god, about. Just need to. I know it's what it's not about, but it's what people want it to be about, and that's definitely not what it's about. And and you know what? The question I want answered is: Is this going to be a weekly television show? Is this going to be something that happens? You know, every every major TV? holiday. You know, is it going to be happening every major holiday? I mean, what is it? What is all of the wrestling? Like, hopefully, we, get some we don't. We don't know. We're going. Hopefully, we'll get some answers. And ho- and we might even have to have an emergency brainbuster radio episode after that rally if some big news comes out. So we'll. Be keeping an eye out on it for you, Brainiacs. Keep it locked to BrainBusterRadio.com. We might have a bonus episode next week just because that could be some big news. Uh, all right. This is the moment I've been waiting for all show long. I'm, uh, if, if Triple J is ready, 
I, I've sent him a link to watch the big controversy of the week. Triple J, are you there? All right, yeah, guys, I'm here. All right, all right. Triple J. The big controversy this week surrounds women's wrestler Priscilla Kelly, who was in the May Young Classic. Do you remember her? Uh, this year? Yes. Yes. What did what did she look like? She was she was Paige's uh, Paige's twin. Oh, okay. Yes. She looks like Paige. She's from Georgia. She's a uh, some sort of gypsy gimmick. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The girl that looked like the Paige, gypsy queen. The well, electric gypsy. I'm sending. <laughs> I sent you here in our in our Marburger chat. Yeah, I, I was told not to look at this earlier. A link. I want you to look at it live on on the air. Okay. And give us your live instant reaction to the spot that has everybody talking. <laughs> no, I don't have to read the headlines. Just watch the video. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm clicking on it right now. Do I need the sound? No, no, you, uh, no not really. All right. All right, let's see. Okay, we yeah, just want to hear you. She definitely looks like Paige. She's, she looks like she's itchy. She's, she's <laughs> itching herself. What are those brass knuckles? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 I think she had a dead mouth in her pants. Like dead <laughs> <laughs> what? She's got a mouse. Uh, oh, she put the mouse. She, she put the mouse in the other. Who's this other unlucky soul? Tuna. Tuna. The big tuna. <laughs> the big tuna got the fish. Triple J. Let's just Trip, triple J. Uh, that, what, that, what, that was not a mouse. Uh, <laughs> what, I thought I saw a tail. <laughs> well, you see, Triple J, uh, every 28 days, women uh, I, I, get rid of their eggs and <laughs> in order to prepare for a fresh batch of, of new eggs. Uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm smart enough. Uh, <laughs> let me, let, let me uh, and, and maybe in... Uh, <laughs> maybe, well, in words, a, maybe in words, maybe in words, maybe words you may there. may understand. May, I don't know. Uh, you know, this is like an ECW. If the Sandman whooped a used com- condom after off of his trunk <laughs> <laughs> and shoved it in Trump Tommy Dreamer's face, I'm, I'm pretty that's sure. what this is like. I'm pretty sure this is, is this is ridiculous. This oh is, my gosh! This. this is, this is fucking comedy wrestling. This is okay, uh, this it was, is awful. It's safe to say that Priscilla Kelly is not going to be invited to the May Young. Oh, why not? Why wouldn't you invite her back? Could you well, hear Laura Ronaldo? Let's take a look at the next competitor. Well, I'll you know. Uh, all, all, all I see is someone. All I see is someone grabbing the brass ring, going that extra mile. That is, she was grabbing uh, something. Oh, I, 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 I want to know how she finished around. the match. I have, she hear what, the match? I have to hear well, what Jim Cornette has to say about this later. Jim, oh, Ro- Jim Ross, Jim Ross is quoted as saying, "Embarrassing." Tessa it Blanchard, embarrassing. Tessa Blanchard said, "I'm actually disgusted with this." Angelina Love said, "WTF?" Do I you mean, think there's going to be a boycott of people working against uh, Priscilla. I, I don't yeah. think so, and also, but she has gotten some love from some people, including yeah. Tommy Dreamer, who said. Anything to entertain the fans. Way to go. Do you think do you think the wrestling community would have received it more positively if she had used a diva cup? <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> what if a pad was used instead? The the sponge. Uh, I don't Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. If, if, if Jeffrey the, the uh, Jeffrey the, the giraffe from Toys R Us can, can fight in a ring, why can't we have a used tampon? I don't Ex- know. I, I mean it's the Mr. Sacco is just as gross. This w- yeah, I disagree. This wasn't what? just used. This was a freshly Yeah, Mr. Used. Sacco was never inside <laughs> used. anyone. If Mr. Sacco was up McFoley's asshole and he pulled it out, then yes, you've you're root- you're right? you're you're demonizing Priscilla Kelly, yet you're rooting for a guy who shoves knives up people's pee holes. He I doesn't do that. Jo- Joey Ryan's out there smacking people with his fucking dick, and you're not. I said a that was. With it. Uh, yes, I did have a problem with that. It was stupid. Oh, oh it's great. dumb. Great wrestling. Uh, I'm hopefully Priscilla Kelly gets signed by one of the big companies 
after a, I mean, that's how you go out there and you make this a name for yourself. This is, this how is could Cody she Rhodes this? type wrestling. That's what this Man, is. This is the kind of stuff she all elite wrestling. Who? That's Cody I Rhodes. I hope she, <laughs> this is Cody AEW, Rhodes wrestling. Just way. comedy wrestling, no selling, ridiculous shit. <laughs> oh. But Moose the Mark. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Your your expert opinion. What happens with Priscilla Kelly's career? Is she gonna is she gonna get booked a lot, or is this gonna hurt her? You know what, man? Joey Ryan's like the hottest thing on the indies right now. Like everyone says, oh, it's like killer career or whatever. You, this is just impressive. I don't know, man. Do you think the agent planned this out? Like, do you think this <laughs> was improv? Was this a Dean Malenko oh, book yeah, yeah. match? Were they put this, like did they put this together backstage? Yeah. I mean, and if you're the opponent, I mean, did you agree to this? I mean, was this a gimmick one or was this a shoot? Uh, I can't believe we went from Gina tamper. pulling straight to this. It's pro wrestling. Uh, I mean, Gene would have approved. I guarantee you. There's only one thing that he means. Yes, that's the only thing he would say about this. <laughs> She's uh, a very, a very rambunctious young woman. Uh, mean Gene, very, mean Gene, what does Cooper looking? have to say about this? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you want to know more about Priscilla Kelly's feminine hygiene, call the WCW hotline. Kids, get your parents' permission. Ugh. Oh, that Priscilla Kelly, I, she's she's yeah. dividing the Trump pro wrestling. Pants. Yeah, she's. I, I would like to see that that World Cup uh, blast area respond to that video on the oh, screen. Oh God! <laughs> Everybody oh, puking. God. This would be like an Ace Ventura at the end. That's yeah. what <laughs> Mr. Winky. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Brady X. Those are our big headlines this week. Tweet it, read it, tie it, shout it. Be all about it at the Brain Busters on all social media gimmicks. Let us know if you think it's okay pulling, ripping a tampon out of your coochie and shoving it down your opponent's face. I, I I'm not going to say who offers any, any. But I, I'm all about if it's if it's within the rules, if it's no DQ, it's it's fine by me. Kids, get your parents' um, permission. Is that, I mean, why would you ever you know, think of writing a rule I, I, about I mean, that? I mean, if you weren't. I mean, was she drug tested for this? I mean, what if she has like AIDS or an STD? I mean, you know, you can't tell me none of those bodily fluids were ingested by the opponent. No holds are barred in matches like that. No DQ. That's how you cover these rules, Triple J, by saying no holds barred. I bet it couldn't have been sanctioned. That match? <laughs> Could you, uh, yeah, is there a promotion that will sanction a Priscilla Kelly match Probably anymore? Probably not, especially not in Nevada. Put that cigarette out. Uh, I'm, I mean, uh, I don't know. You, you never, She's you never be able to wrestle in like in like Africa <laughs> or Australia. some islands. Somewhere. Only power, only power. Uti will ever book Priscilla <laughs> Kelly Triple J. I, ho- I hope this image I don't send to you guys is just her new profile picture everywhere. Uh, do we really have to look at it? No, you're gonna want to look at this. Let's go ahead. Ew! Ew. Nice close up of it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Clear HD, I think that's that's the best. Uh, that's, that's a, I'm just saying, you never heard of. I also know, wonder that looks like a regular. She might need to be switching up to a to a larger, a heavier, heavier tampon. That's you never. Problem. Do you think she's going to be billed on the indie circuit as heavy flow now? <laughs> 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 she she should start doing high five high fly flow. <laughs> You, you, you never heard of Nick Bockwinkle rubbing his hemorrhoids on somebody else's face. I'll, I'll just say that. <laughs> Thank you. At least somebody said it. <laughs> Heavy flow. Oh, man. Well, there it is. That This week's headlines, unbelievable. From Gene Oakland to Priscilla Kelly. That's what happens when you're talking pro wrestling, Brainiacs. Let's close it out, hopefully with some class this week. Anything goes, though. I- Anything I'm, about to, right I'm about to shut this rest of this episode down because of corporate yeah, policy. <laughs> can... Won't let me talk about it on the air. I think we've crossed too many lines. No, There's there been... are no lines to cross when no holds are barred, especially when it's Brainbuster Radio. Falls count anywhere. In a fantastic, excuse me, in a fantastic main event at this year's Wrestle Kingdom 13. We saw the past, the present, and apparently the future ace of New Japan, Tanahashi, defeat Kenny Omega. 
I do not expect to see Kenny Omega in All Elite Wrestling very soon. I don't think his business in New Japan Pro Wrestling is finished. From all we know, the documentaries, the shoot interviews, the podcast from Kenny Omega, this is not a guy that would just leave the country of Japan on a whim like this. He's learned the language. He's lived there for many years. Yes, he is technically a gaijin, but he is one of the most loyal men that there are out there today. So I do think that he's going to get a rematch against Tanahashi. And there's only one place that I can see it happening. In the biggest arena in the world, Madison Square Garden. G1 Supercard, Tanahashi versus Omega, the main event. I'd like to see it happen. I hope it happens. And I think it is going to happen. G1 Climax! Let me tell you something, Brainiacs. Gene Okerlund, one of the greatest of all time. And I am just disgusted that we had to talk about all this horseshit <laughs> on this episode. You know, whether it be talking about Jay White or tampons or, you know, make believe uh, promotions. This should all be about Gene Okerlund, damn it. I have, I've had enough. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Brady X in his eye, a man called Wired. And, and Vidman, I'm, 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 I'm shocked. I'm surprised at you. The, the man who, who, who you cheer for the most, the man who you root for, never shows up. Yet this girl, who's, who's putting in her, 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 her hours, her time, you know, every single day, I mean, come on. Come on. She, she's at least putting in the effort. Your man's sitting at home not doing shit. Priscilla Kelly applaud you. Uh, and I'll talk about this next week and the week after. That's this, I'm, I'm changing this to the official Brain Buster Radio profile image. Priscilla Kelly holding her tampons. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know something, Brainiacs? There's been one other uh, news note that we didn't quite mention on headlines, and it's another sad one. I hate to report that as of today, the genius cast with Lanny Pofo is no longer in production. He kicked it. He's got a lot left on his bucket lift, and Lanny Pofo wants to explore greater horizons. And for that, I salute him. But in honor of the, the, the huge, huge legacy of work he accomplished with the genius cast, the undeniable impact it had on our industry, I would like to read a poem written by the genius about Mean Gene Okerlund, if I may. The cadence is a little weird, but this is by the genius. It's Mr. Mean Gene Okerlund, the master of the microphone, the man whose voice has launched a million fans. With pear-shaped tones and resonance and lightning-quick rebuttals, he can hold the wrestling world in his hands. Although he uses fancy words with William Buckley tendencies, he's always good for some atrocious pun. The next time he apostulates, just get your dictionary and proceed to have a plethora of fun. Rest in peace, Mean Gene. Brainiacs, what a week already in 2019, starting the pro wrestling year off right. Wrestle Kingdom 13 delivered in every single way. Unfortunately, we lost Mean Gene Okerlund, but we start 2019 remembering how great he was, and hopefully, hopefully that will guide us into the future. And hopefully, Mean Gene, as he passes... And maybe more people can recognize how important a role uh, for an interviewer is on a professional wrestling show. I'm hoping WWE takes note, uh, remembering him on Monday Night Raw coming up this week. And hopefully people at All Elite Wrestling realize how big it is to have a great interviewer, a great person holding that microphone, guiding the show along. How important that is. And hopefully they hire someone capable of doing that. We've seen in the past, if you don't have a stick man... You have no one to guide your show. So, Mean Gene Okerlund, as we remember him today, the most important figure, I think unsung figure, 
of 1980s and mid 90s wrestling. May he rest in peace forever and a hundred years again. Mean Gene Okerlund, Brainbuster Radio salutes you. Long Island, that was good and all, and I, and I love Mean Gene, but can we talk more tampon? Tampons? Well, maybe you and I could discuss tampons if Priscilla Kelly is hired by All Elite Wrestling, and we'll do a special All Elite Wrestling rally show of BBR. Okay. Vin, Man, Vin Man has steam coming out of his ears right now. <laughs> I, I, I had a feeling that if, you know, Brianna Bella and Miss Elizabeth and MVP listen to this episode of this show, I think the show's going to get shut down. <laughs> I'm very concerned right now. <laughs> Vin Man and I, we're just going to work on our pear-shaped tones for next week. you, you got to keep your, your, your wives away from the business. That's what Kevin Nash always said. Keep the women away from the business. Uh, MVP may not want to go to WrestleMania anymore if she, oh, she hears yeah. about this nonsense. <laughs> oh, well, Bra- Brainiacs, it's professional wrestling. Anything can happen. I mean, think about it. We had Uncle Dave Meltzer on the show earlier, and we almost forgot about that because Priscilla Kelly, an independent wrestler out of nowhere, stole the show. Can we stop talking about her? She <laughs> stole She stole the show, Moose the Mark. You got any party well, words for all the Brainiacs? Oh, oh. I mean, that's just a necessity of living, but you don't need to take it that far. <laughs> Gross. Moose the Mark, you made your return and you were outshined by an independent wrestler. How's it feel? Uh, it's a new year. It's a new Moose. I am back. It's the year of the Moose on Brain Buster Radio by the Brain Buster Radio Astrological Calendar. It is the year of the Moose. I'm devastated. I missed our interview with my idol, Uncle Dave Meltzer, but I can't wait to see what 2019 has in store for the Brain Busters. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to stay. Stick around. We got to record some promos. Moose the Mark is bringing it on these Brainbuster Radio coming to a town near you. It's a new moose. I love the year of the moose. New year, new moose. <laughs> this Tuesday we roll through Jacksonville <laughs> yeah. live television. Well, Brainiacs, if you haven't puked all over your your device, you're listening to this on or. If uh, you're still with us, this is the end of the show. And we just want to say, enjoy 2019 and all that pro wrestling will provide, whether it's gross, whether it's <laughs> epic, whether it's a big return, a big match, whether, whether it's sad. Let's all go through it together in this professional wrestling universe we all live in. Uh, ups and downs, we're going to be here with you forever in 100 years. There, no one's shutting this show down. <laughs> still going on. For Vin Man on limited dates and probably a lot more limited after today. For <laughs> Jumpin' Jacob J. For Moose the Mark making his big return. For Triple J. For Dr. Calsonis sleeping on the Unos and Doses. And for a man called Wired, the Sultan of Social Media and the Sultan of Feminine Hygiene. And for Long Allen Ice Tea. I'm Long Allen Ice Tea saying, I gotta get the hell out of here and watch some pro graps. It was all in in good fun, and I certainly hope I didn't hurt anybody's feelings. If I did, f*** them.